This is happening. We're talking about this. We have opinions on this. RFK Jr. admits in bizarre video that he dumped a dead bear in New York Central Park. I did see a tweet about this, which was something to the effect of uh, no one, absolutely no one. And then RFK Jr. is like, all right, fine. You know about Malaysia Flight 370 or whatever. Um, why does he keep doing this? This shit was crazy, like genuinely insane. I'm, I still haven't gotten over. I still haven't gotten over when he was directly confronted with an accusation of sexual assault. And his response to it was like, yeah, I haven't done all good things. And I've probably got lots of skeletons in my closet. And I think it was uh, Sauger was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah, I might've done that before. I'm not a church boy. What? What? It's crazy. I was taking a group of people on Falcony and uh, up in Goshen, New York, up in the Hudson Valley. And I was supposed to meet them there at like maybe eight or nine. I was driving up maybe, you know, really early, like seven. And, and that woman in a van in front of me hit a bear and killed it. A young bear. So I pulled over and I picked up the bear and put him in the back of my van because I was going to skin the bear and it was very good condition and I was going to and put the meat in my refrigerator and you can do that in New York City, you can get a bear tag uh, for a roadkill bear. And so then I, we went hawking and I had the bear in my car and then oh, we had a really good day and we went late. We were catching a lot of game and the people really loved it. So we stayed late and instead of going back to my home in Westchester, I had to go right to the city because there was a dinner at Peter Luger's Steakhouse. And at the end of the dinner, it went late and I realized I couldn't go home. I had to go to the airport and the bear was in my car and I didn't want to leave the bear in the car. Um, because that would have been bad. So then I thought, you know, at that time, this was the, the, in the, the little bit of the redneck in me. You've got to stay in a shirt. series of bicycle accidents in New York. They had just put in the bike lanes and saw people come. Can, so can somebody explain to me why they felt the need to record this? Like, here I am in my home. Let me explain to my, I assume, wife. The, wh why was this, in why did this need to be made? of people that got killed and it was every day and people had gotten bad oh that's roseanne bart no shit that is i don't think i've seen a picture of her in a really long time okay that doesn't answer my question if anything that adds more questions to my the, the retinue of questions that okay every day it was in the press and so i thought uh, i wasn't drinking of course but people were drinking with me who thought this was a good idea and I said, well, I had an old bike in my car that somebody had asked me to get rid of. And I said, let's go put the bear in Central Park and we'll make it look like he got hit by a bike. <laughs> <laughs> fun, funny for people. So everybody thought that's a great idea. So we went and did that and we thought it would be amusing for whoever found it or something. Uh, the next day, it was like, uh, it was on every television station. It was the front page of every paper. And I turned on the TV and there was like a mile of yellow tape and there were 20 cop cars. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he posted this on his Twitter account. This is looking forward to seeing how you spin this one at New Yorker. Why? Why? Why, why does he do this? Yeah, I saw he took a picture of himself with the dead bear where he places his hand in the bloody mouth of the bear corpse and pretends that it's biting him here okay there's a cropped version of the image in this news article where you don't see like the bear's guts or whatever and there see he's like pretending that it bit him that's a small bear it's a bear cub i i i think i remember this being news back when it happened because it was just so wild that there was a bear cub in Central Park. Apparently, this is the CNN segment that aired about the incident. According to his biographers via Behind the Bastards, he's obsessed with dead animals. I have seen him pose next to multiple dead animals. 
time. There's been no bears in the park for a long, long time. It seems as if someone brought the thing there, which is really sad. There's been no bears in the park for a long time. Okay. There were helicopters flying over it. And I was like, oh my God, what did I do? And, uh, and then they were, there were some people on TV in Tyvek suits with gloves on lifting up the bike, and they're saying they're going to take this up too. Me, me when the check clears. I like Bobby Kennedy Jr. Uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. on a personal level, says Jenk Uger, ostensibly a uh, progressive news host and one of the co-founders of Justice Dems. I don't care if that makes you dislike me. He lives life to the fullest, even if that's not how we would live it. That's my criteria for liking political candidates, too, that they live life to the fullest. That's the main thing that I look at and not any of their beliefs, positions, behaviors, viability as a candidate, anything like that. And you might do the same if you are... Are you f kidding me? If you, our father, was killed when you were a kid, makes you realize how short life is. But leaving dead bears in Central Park is why people find him too strange to get their vote. I get it, and he should understand that too. He's lived too interesting a life for the general population to accept him. They may be right, but he does add color to our lives. So how much do you think this tweet was? Five dollars. Crazy, crazy how like in a time where even the moderate Democrats are embracing the you're weird line and pointing out that the right wing is like full of disgusting freaks, Jenk's position seems to be to have found the freakiest of them and then decide that he finds that endearing. Even though Robert Kennedy's positions are almost uniformly vile and right wing and there was literally a leaked phone call of him talking with Donald Trump. <laughs> Like, like a little bitch boy taking orders from his, his master. Jesus. Yeah, Benjamin, they didn't pay him enough to change the entire show. All oh, they need to get a finger printed. Uh -oh. And, uh, <laughs> I was worried because my prints were all over that bike. <laughs> uh, luckily, um, the, uh, the story died down after a while and, uh, and it stayed dead for a decade and, um, the New Yorker somehow found out about it and they just, they're going to do a big article on me and that's- Oh, he's getting ahead of it. Okay. How funny would it be? What if you were like a so-called friend of RFK Jr., but you f***ing hated him and you realize he will try to get ahead of any story and he has no shame and he's done a lot of bad things. You could go up to RFK Jr. and you could be like, hey, CBS found out about her. The girl, the young one, just letting you know friend. And the next day, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. would be like, I, I have had sex with multiple... <laughs> Just try to spin this one, guys. I'm getting ahead of it. You know? Uh, clip? No, I stopped before they could clip me. One of the articles, so they asked me the fact checker is that... You know, it's going to be a bad story. Okay, well... So that's why, that's why they did this. Okay. By the way, the New York Times article where this bear was discovered in 2014 was written by JFK's second granddaughter. Tatiana Celia Kennedy Schlossberg is an American journalist and author and the second granddaughter of John F. Kennedy. This image brings joy. Oh, thank God. And uh, Kennedy is only down to 2% as the direct choice. Oh man, I hope this is 2% polling from Harris and not who the f is Oliver. He looks like he looks like he'd be um, like a Metal Gear politician.